House Thorn is one of the larger houses of the Crown Lands. However, we currently do not know the location of their seat or their house words. What we do know what their banner looks like, a silver flail on red with a black border. While much of their history has not been documented, they have played an important role in the history of Westeros via their two most famous members, Sir Rickard Thorne, the legendary Knight of the Kingsguard during the reign of King Viserys I Targaryen, playing a vital role during the Dance of the Dragons. And also we have Sir Alistair Thorne, who played the role during Robert's Rebellion and later became a key member of the Night's Watch during the timeline of the main books. After the death of King Viserys I Targaryen in 129 AC, and thus the onset of the Dance of the Dragons, Sir Rickard Thorne chose the side of King Aegon II Targaryen and the Green Faction in King's Landing, remaining with the Lord Commander of the Kingsguard, Sir Kristen Cole. In the ensuing civil war, known as the Dance of the Dragons, after it had turned from a war of words into a war of fire and blood by the year 130 AC, during the fall of King's Landing, when Queen Rhaenyra Targaryen's dragons first appeared in the skies above the capital, Lord Larys Strong, known to the pages of history as the Clubfoot, the master of whisperers for King Aegon, smuggled the king and his daughter, Princess Chihera, and young son and heir, Maelor Targaryen, safely through the secret passages known only to Laris, within Maegor's Holdfast in the Red Keep. The small party was accompanied by two members of the Kingsguard, Sir Rickard Thorne and Sir Willis Fell. Sir Willis was charged to bring Jehera to Storm's End and the protection of Boros Baratheon. Maelor was likewise put into the charge of Sir Rickard Thorne, who swore to bring the three-year-old heir to the Iron Throne to the safety of Old Town and House Hightower. Their escape was successful, and after Queen Rhaenyra posted a huge reward for information leading to the capture of Aegon, Jehera, and Maelor, as well as the false Knight, Willis and Rickard, when that failed to produce anything, Rhaenyra sent out a hunting parties of knights inquisitors to seek out the escapees and punish anyone who'd helped them. Rickard Thorne travelled incognito, claiming Maelor as his son. The road to Old Town passed through the town of Bitterbridge, that by this time was held by the Blacks, with the High Tower host from Old Town on the other side of the river. When reaching Bitterbridge, Rickard attempted to stay at an inn called the Hog's Head, but there were no rooms available, with hundreds of men and women fleeing from the forces of the Greens. Rickard is said to have showed a silver stag to the innkeep with the innkeep allowing them to stay in his stable if he cleaned them out first. Once Ricard did so, the innkeep offered him a drink as a pretext for his stable boy to search for more money in Ricard's belongings. They did not find any coin, but they did find Maelor's dragon egg, wrapped in Ricard's white cloak of the Kingsguard. When the boy informed the innkeep in the common room of his discovery, Ricard fled the inn with Maelor, slaying the innkeeper on his way out and stealing a fresh horse from the stables. All the while a mob of people followed behind him, charging for the bridge and for the safety of the Hightower host, Rickard was surrounded by the mob on the bridge, where he was killed by a crossbowman, though it is said that the Kingsguard knight clung to his charge until the very end and did everything he could to save the boy. It is believed a washerwoman, known as Willow Poundstone, had to tear a crying Maelor from the dead knight's arms. But once the mob had killed Rickard and seized Maelor, they did not know what to do with the boy. They debated whether to bring him to the faraway King's Landing for Rhaenyra's reward, or rather take him to the nearby Long Table and the Camp of the Greens, who might pay more for Maelor. A fight then broke out between the mob and the crossbowmen, who had killed Rickard. Willow Poundstone is believed to have said that no one was going to hurt her new son. It is disputed what exactly happened next. The court form Mushroom's account claims that Willow Poundstone accidentally crushed Maelor to death in her arms, while Septon Eustace claims he was chopped up into six pieces by a butcher so everyone might have a piece of the prince. Grand the Munkin writes that Maelor was torn apart by the mob. All that we know for sure is that by the time that Lady Caswell and her knights arrived, Maelor was dead. Lady Caswell hanged those responsible for the prince's death, had Sir Rickard's corpse and Maelor's head sent to Queen Rhaenyra at King's Landing. Sir Rickard, whether you supported Rhaenyra or Aegon, is remembered as a true knight of the Kingsguard, giving his life and doing his duty to protect his charge. Sir Alistair Thorne is a knight from House Thorne, who by the time of the main book series, serves as the Master of Arms at the Night's Watch's Castle Black. He is described as a capable man, but he is bitter and humourless, and is particularly hated by many of the recruits of the Watch, who have been trained by him. Born around the year 
year 247 AC. Alistair is said to be a man in his 50s, with sharp black eyes and black hair, with streaks of grey. He wears crisp black leather, with a fur-trimmed cloak and polished boots, and is often seen wielding a longsword. Before he joined the Night's Watch, Alistair was a knight of House Thorn, who fought on the side of House Targaryen during Robert's Rebellion, suggesting that House Thorn too supported King Aerys II. He was part of the defence of King's Landing, and after its sack and the downfall of House Targaryen, Alistair was given a choice by Lord Tywin Lannister between losing his head and taking the black. Thorne decided to join the Night's Watch, like many of the others who had fought on the losing side of Robert's Rebellion. By the time of the start of the main book series in 298 AC, Alistair is now the Master at Arms at Castle Black, and responsible for the training of new recruits, a job he seems to dislike. When Jon Snow arrives at the Wall, Sir Alistair gives Jon the mocking nickname Lord Snow, mocking his status as a bastard. His disdain turns to hatred when Jon replies to one of his mockeries, causing an outbreak of laughter in the whole common room of Castle Black to the embarrassment and anger of Alistair. Alistair is generally regarded as a humorless man and again takes the mockeries of Tyrion Lannister poorly. When Tyrion is invited to the table of the Lord Commander of the Night's Watch, Gior Mormont, during his visit to the Wall, Sir Alistair also shows a deep disdain for the cowardly Samuel Tarly when he arrives at the Wall as a new recruit. When Sam refuses to defend himself during a sparring session, much to the anger of Alistair, Jon Snow and a group of other Night's Watch recruits befriend Sam and convince other recruits not to beat the cowardly boy despite Alistair's orders. When Jon Snow is later appointed to the stewards instead of the rangers as he wanted and expected, Alistair appeared pleased at Jon's anger and disappointment, so much so that Jon believed that Alistair was behind it. Samuel Tarly, however, explains to Jon that the appointment indicates that he will be trained by Jor Mormont in command. Even after Jon officially becomes a member of the Watch, after taking the oath, Alistair never misses an opportunity or occasion to provoke him, especially about his bastard status. The evening Jon learns of the imprisonment of his father, Lord Eddard Stark, for treason, Alistair jeers anger Jon, who tries to attack him with a knife, before being stopped and put under arrest and confined to his room. The hostility between Alistair and Jon needed to be addressed. We learn Alistair still has some old friends who are well placed at court in King's Landing, so Lord Commander Mormont sends him to visit the new king, Joffrey Baratheon, to ask for more men and resources. He is to show the severed hand of Jaffa Flowers, who had turned into a white, to the court. Sir Andrew Tarth takes Alistair's place as Master at Arms of Castle Black while he's on his mission south. During the events of A Clash of Kings, we learn that Sir Alistair sails from Eastwatch by the Sea to King's Landing, where he asks for an audience with the King. Tyrion Lannister is now the acting hand of the King. Remembering his dislike for Alistair from his time spent at the Wall, he delays the meeting several times, and has Bronn find poor quarters in the Red Keep for Alistair. When he eventually does appear before the Small Council in the Throne Room, Jaffa's hand has rotted away to bones, given how much time has passed, and thus Alistair's story of Whites and White Walkers is mocked by Tyrion, which angers Alistair. Tyrion allows a word to be put out in King's Landing that the Night's Watch is in need of men, and allows Alistair to take men from the dungeons. When Tyrion dismisses Alistair from court, he asks the knight to give his regards to Lord Commander Mormont and Jon Snow. During the events of A Storm of Swords, we learn that Alistair sails back to the Wall and serves as the new master at arms at Eastwatch by the sea, rather than returning to Castle Black. It is there he falls in with Janos Slint, who had also come from King's Landing with Alistair and had been exiled to the Watch by Tyrion. Alistair, Janos, and Sir Gledon Hewitt and other members of Eastwatch travelled to Castle Black during the battle beneath the wall, as the number of men at Castle Black remaining after the Great Ranging was dangerously low. They accused Jon, who had been leading the defence against the wildlings of Mance Raider, of being a turncloak and an oathbreaker, and the captive Rattleshirt verifies that Jon had killed Corin Halfhand beyond the wall. To prove that he is not a traitor, Jon is sent by Alistair to assassinate Mance in a meeting north of the Wall, but this meeting is interrupted by the arrival of Stannis Baratheon's host. 
During the choosing for the new Lord Commander, after Gior Mormont's death at the mutiny at Craster's Keep, Alistair comes in sick in the voting on the first day and loses votes on the second day. As many Black Brothers resented having been trained by him and his harsh treatment of them, he withdraws his name and decides to support Janos, who did not have such a negative history with the Men of the Watch. Alistair expects Othal Yarwick, the first builder, to support Janos as well, but the reluctant Othal shocks Alistair by instead mentioning Jon Snow, who is soon elected as the commander of the Watch, much to the disgust of Alistair. During the events of A Dance with Dragons, Alistair complains that Jon's election was overseen by a blind Maester Aemon, who was fond of Jon, with Jon's friend Samuel Tarly by his side, and suggests there may have been a foul play involved in Jon's election win but has no proof of it. To separate Janos Slint and Alistair, Jon appoints Janos to command the garrison of Greyguard, one of the abandoned castles of the Watch. Jon planned on repairing and garrisoning. When Janos refuses to obey the order, Jon personally beheads him. Alistair is present when the sentence is given, but does not interfere, much to Jon's disappointment. Alistair later is one of the senior members of the Watch to oppose Jon's decision to let the wildlings pass south of the Wall. Although Jon thinks the Master at Arms has become more circumspect after Janos's execution, Jon later orders Alistair to accompany Dwen and other seasoned rangers in scouting beyond the Wall. Alistair is angry but accepts the mission, not wanting to give Jon a cause to execute him as well. He then states that he will return from the ranging one way or another and until the Winds of Winter is hopefully released. That is all we currently know of Sir Alistair Thorne and House Thorne.